Hi, hi, hello, hello. This is the Digital Loop, Season 3, Episode 17. Um, and we have actually a guest uh, this time again, and it's a very special guest because he was kind of the topic of our first episode of the season. Hi, Samir, how are you? Hi, how are you? Yeah, very good. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Paul. Hi, Samir. Great to be here with you. Great to have a, a, a reunion, uh, even if it's virtually. <laughs> We actually saw, uh, Ivan, you, I mean, we were at his uh, conference last December, was it, in uh, Lebanon, in Beirut, uh, called Banque du Liban BDL Accelerate. Uh, that was an awesome conference. The videos are online. I think we already talked about it in our first episode, how to accelerate emerging countries. Uh, I've, I've, I've known Samir for quite a long time, actually. Uh, unbeknownst to a lot of people, we actually met on a dance floor in Tokyo maybe five years ago or six years ago. <laughs> for totally yeah. Unrelated to uh, the tech world, actually, so that was it. We became very close friends. And Samira, so you can you just tell us about what you did before that? So you really launched. You were trying to do a, a Silicon Valley, basically, in in Beirut. Is that correct? Yeah, I've been uh, I've been trying through different means and channels to create a bit of an ecosystem here that we could compare to the Valley of the of of, of San Francisco, but. Uh, it's been through a bit of challenges, and uh, and let's just say along the way we've had some wins, we've had some uh, uh, some failures, but I think we're we're on the right track. When you say well, you are we are on the right track, does that mean that it's uh, do you see your ecosystem actually growing? Well, we just uh, we were able to make uh, we were able to get the central bank of Lebanon a billion dollars into the ecosystem so I'd say that's a good step forward prior to that point uh, over the course of maybe 10 years only 15 million was invested in the ecosystem so now we have 400 million to be deployed in five to ten years so it's uh, quite a significant shift in how much capital is available and since capital drives a lot of the activity I think we we have built quite a lot of momentum. But uh, just just so I mean, for those who were not uh, ingrained in these affairs, is that public money that's being invested, or is that facilitation of private fund being invested? No, it's it, it's public money that's provided as a guarantee to investors uh, that are private entities, primarily banks in Lebanon, because the financial sector in Lebanon is very robust. So does that mean, if I understand well, does that mean that if I want to build my own startup? If I if I locate it in Beirut, then I'll have a guarantee, a financial guarantee by the central bank. Is that something I understood well? Yes. If you are raising money in Lebanon, okay, uh, but you don't necessarily have to be a Lebanese startup. You just have to be willing to have your operations or a yeah. part of your operations in Lebanon. The central bank will guarantee seventy five percent of any equity investment in your company. Uh, this can be done either through an accelerator, through a VC, or directly through uh, a bank. So the bank can come in and say, "I want to put a, I want to put a million dollars," and the central bank will give the bank a 75% guarantee on that. So let's backtrack like a little bit now. So I, I understand that this initiative is very interesting, and it will clearly help. And then we'll go to the, to that a little bit. Clearly help the ecosystem in in Lebanon. But why this system? Why did you bring, did, was it your idea, is it something that somebody told you to do, is it something that you brainstorm with other people? Tell us a little bit more about the history behind it. Well, let's just say this isn't, um, this isn't completely new. The, I think the way it is being uh, done is new, but it has been done before in some of the major ecosystems around the world, like uh, Singapore, for example where there's a matching dollar for dollar or Correct. dollar for dollar of an investment. And it's the same concept. It may not be called a guarantee, but effectively it's a guarantee because it's de-risking the investment. Uh, and why, would, why is it being deployed like this? Because at the end of the day, the sovereign risk of Lebanon is very high. And as long as the sovereign risk is high, investing in high-risk investments in a high-risk sovereign risk uh, environment is extremely difficult for uh, for investors especially non local investors but that's so, okay. that's hold on but that's the case for every single country that is an emerging on a frontier country you know i mean if you're a foreign investor you have first of all you have maybe the the, the fear of not knowing the market etc and then you have of course the financial conditions but do you okay, think so, yeah go ahead go ahead i'll i'll finish my question afterwards so emerging market doesn't necessarily mean high sovereign risk. Of course not. Okay, so 
our emerging market is potentially like many other emerging markets, but we have we are exposed to a lot more risk as a result of our location, our neighbors, and our general status quo. So what the central bank came and uh, did, they they came and said, listen, let's try to be uh, equal to the best emerging market out there in terms of risk profile by de-risking our profile to the tune of 75%. So we have now one fourth the risk. That you would uh, that you would have if you were investing without the guarantee. Uh, with uh, if you were in one yeah. fourth the risk of if you were investing without the guarantee. Without the guarantee. Which means that now all of these uh, all of these comparatives can be like oh you investing in Lebanon is like investing for example in uh, Brazil or in other countries that have a lot less sovereign risk but are still emerging markets. So we're not comparing ourselves to New York or London or or. No. Uh, that was actually exactly where I was going to with my question. It was how so do you think that will help Lebanon? And has it helped already Lebanon? Because that's a very good good uh, uh, use case actually. What you're trying to achieve there has it helped raise its profile uh, beyond its border? Has it helped raise its profile amongst other emerging countries? Is it something? I understand that you have a yeah, the, the sovereign risk is higher in Lebanon. But do you think this type of initiative for other countries? That might have also a higher sovereign risk, which might be, of course, for different causes. Is it something that has been proved fruitful so far or not? I think it has. Uh, we did a major event in New York uh, roughly two and a half months ago. I think you were there, if yeah. I recall properly. Yeah. <laughs> I was also, and, of course. <laughs> and from what we, from the reaction we received, uh, the impact was tremendous in changing people's perception about whether the risk is acceptable enough for a venture capital investment. And the response was very positive. People started looking at Lebanon as a potential destination. The fact that the central bank is already de-risking these investments means that if you invest in a portfolio of companies, plus the 75% guarantee, the potential that all of this is going to blow up in your face and you lose that 25% risk that you're taking, is very, 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 very small to the point that it may actually be negligible uh, when you when you look at it from a basket uh, slash portfolio perspective. So investors are starting to look at it like a free investment. So I'm going to put in 25%. That 25% is only affected at the end of the 75% that is guaranteed by the central bank. So there's it's not a pro rata risk here. As a result, if I diversify enough across my investments, I am basically investing at zero risk, and that's how they're looking at it. But now, now let's take a, a little bit of a step back here. Uh, this is a, an investment profile you're talking about. Now, in case of VCs or in case of uh, startups, which is the topic as well of this show, what kind of startups can I expect to, to, to see in Lebanon? What kind of startups are we going to see? Will you have success? Did you have successes? I know you have a few. You can actually name them. We have what had a couple. Of, and what we kind of other successes one. can we expect for such a small country on the border of the Middle East? Well, we've had uh, most of our successes so far that have been public have been successes that revolved around content, content for the Arab world, because Lebanon is by far the only Arab world, Arab country that is liberal and has freedom of press and freedom of speech and all that stuff. So. In the entire region, we're one of the few countries that can, where you can create whatever content you want and distribute it in a whatever manner you want. So the two successes last year that came out, the two exits, one was for content for Arab women, and the other was a recipe online, Arabic, uh, Arabic recipes, so Arabic food, Arab food recipe uh, content portal. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the food one was sold to a Japanese conglomerate, and the Arab women. Yeah, uh, bad, yeah. One, yeah, and the Arab women one was sold to a French conglomerate. So both of the exits were to a non-Arab uh, company. So that was an interesting uh, outcome. As for ones that didn't get much publicity, primarily because they're off the grid, uh, one of them is called Poo. It's a uh, it's a game uh, on both Android and iOS that was launched maybe in 2012. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> exactly. So this guy was working out of his mother's uh, house or something along those lines, you know. And very very low profile guy, cool guy called Paul Salemi. He ended up being the number one game on iOS and Android for like 18 straight months. 
must have printed more money than you, we can both imagine, but completely off the radar. Like he, he, you can't even see him if you wanted to, you know. So that uh, was the result of the fact that he had a good education, he had a good uh, environment in which he was able to build this app, but he did it completely outside of the ecosystem and was able to launch it and succeed with it. And this is what many people call the unicorn. I tend to call it a black swan because at the end of the day, a unicorn is an imaginary thing, whereas a black swan does happen. It just takes all the right uh, parameters to come together. Um, the impact that these different stories had was that people see Lebanon as a potential breeding ground for success, for massive successes. And with this 400 million of the central bank, we now have an opportunity to seed a lot more of these potential successes, and hopefully one in a hundred will be that, uh, that super, super black swan. So uh, from the perspective of what we're doing, we're just trying to make sure as Startup Megaphone that the world recognizes the opportunity so that that opportunity is invested in when it is time to invest in it globally and internationally. The, the Series B, Series C, the potential acquisition and exit down the line, those we're going to require a lot of international support for because we don't have institutions and funds that can do that kind of investment. And so, for instance, I, so I was hosting for you guys the startup uh, Lebanon New York, which happened, like you said, a few months ago, and you'll have one coming up in Singapore as well. Is that correct? Yes. So basically, and this is a vehicle for you, that, hence the startup megaphone, I guess, the name of the company, to start to actually tell this story around the world. Okay. Yeah. Uh, before I, before I give Ivan a question, I just want to also ask because I know it's, it sounds wonderful, but one thing is, do you think that these type? I mean, the message is great. You had some great actually coverage, including by TechCrunch, Mike Butcher. They write some really cool stuff. I'll put the link in the show notes afterwards. Yeah. Uh, you were at the Europa. As you were invited actually in many other actually events as a representative of the uh, the ecosystem in Lebanon, and that's great because that's a. For such a small country, you, you are almost everywhere, and, and whilst I don't see all the other emerging countries, and again, I'm not comparing them, you're apples to apples, but I don't see all the other emerging countries pre present, so kudos to you for always being there. Always being there. The, the, the last question I will ask about this program is, don't you think that at the beginning, uh, Lebanon is, is known to have a very large diaspora? Is of course. Program, do you think it actually you're talking to the diaspora, or you're talking to everyone? Basically, do you think that people that will invest back in Lebanon, and that applies to other emerging countries that would have also a diaspora, are they first and foremost not the diaspora who will be actually investing back? It's not a bad thing, by the way. So, Paul, uh, you have some Greek in you, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I don't know many people who don't like the Mediterranean. Um, and we are one of the few countries on the Mediterranean that is showing some kind of stability and some kind of growth outside of the European Union, and some of the European Union isn't doing as well as we are, which is kind of odd to say. Um, will we attract non-diaspora people? Yes. Will we attract them at the same pace as the diaspora? I'm not sure if, if we should be too focused on the diaspora, simply because the diaspora left because of their concerns, whereas right. people coming in that don't know the story, they will see the story that we share with them and they may be less cynical than the diaspora, okay? They may look at it with a different, much clearer lens. Oh, this is an opportunity. The country is stable. Should anything happen, this is a tech startup. We can just pick up and go somewhere else. So there is an easier approach to coming and establishing something and launching something from here than potentially a diaspora that is concerned for things historic that historically we have no solution for. However, I do see the value of the diaspora because the diaspora has always been an enabler for, Leb for Lebanon. And that's why a lot of our events around the world tend to target areas where there is a diaspora because the diaspora becomes a kind of... Yeah, it has a megaphone effect in and of yeah, itself. Of course. And so even in Singapore, while the diaspora in Singapore is very small, there is quite an active Lebanese diaspora in Singapore, uh, as is with Santiago, which we will be doing next year, as is in London, Paris, Berlin, uh, and all, all around the world. Okay, good. Uh, Ivan, I, I didn't let you ask a question yet, so go ahead. <laughs> cool. Uh, I have a question connected with the, with, with the startup, because I, I can see that this, this program and this concept has developed a lot of very uh, attractive conditions for investors. 
uh, are you creating something or are you doing something for uh, entrepreneurs and, 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 and startups in Lebanon? What are, do you have a program that allows them to, to get experience or to get uh, uh, access to these investors? Uh, the access to the investors is not that difficult because the investors are struggling with deal flow. So an email will open up all the doors. That's not the problem. The creation of startups and the and the creation of uh, entrepreneurs, because that's a cultural thing, those we have programs for, but they aren't even remotely as much as what we need. Mm -hmm. So we need not one accelerator, we need 10 accelerators. We need not one boot camp, we need 20 boot camps, because creating a culture of long-term long, long uh, term, uh, return entrepreneurship as opposed to short-term return entrepreneurship is a very different, it is a very significant culture shift for Lebanon. Lebanon is very entrepreneurial, but as, uh, as um, Paul knows very well, the Mediterranean is a short-term entrepreneurial approach, not a long-term. We like our pubs, we like our restaurants, we like to make our money within the year, because within a year, either we've made our money or we've lost it. Whereas in a startup, you have a seven to 10 year cycle. In 10 years, shit man, 10 years is, the, the, is maybe three crises for Greek and 12 crises for Lebanon. Okay, so uh, so it's 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 an interesting uh, cultural shift that basically says we are going to be stable for at least five years, and in this stability, the returns will be higher. And that's something that is very difficult to teach. It takes just a lot of reinforcement over time to get there. And we're working on creating programs to create that kind of cultural shift. Another another thing that happens a lot in emerging uh, markets is the uh, reliance. On corporates, so how corporates are usually embedded uh, in less mature uh, ecosystems. Usually, corporates plays a very big role in the uh, in the ecosystem, the startup ecosystem, for good and bad. What's the case in uh, in Lebanon? So the good thing about corporates in Lebanon is that the largest sector in Lebanon is the financial sector, and the central bank's uh, circular three three one initiative is purely directed at the financial sector, meaning that the banks are the beneficiary of this $400 million sovereign fund. Yeah, they, so become, the way, they become the conduit, yeah. Exactly. So in a way, w the central bank has created an opportunity for the private sector to be involved in creating this new economy. The only problem is that they have seen the opportunity, but they haven't been vested directly themselves into it. They are more interested in deploying money than in getting involved in the innovation and in insourcing that innovation so that they can drive their businesses. So I am hoping in the next year or two they will start realizing that they will benefit a lot more from, from, uh, from the return on the innovation than they will benefit from the return on investment. I don't know if that makes sense. It does actually. Uh, we have a, a, a still a, a, another five minutes so let's just switch gear a little bit. In terms of because you sell Lebanon, it looks great as, okay, I need to, if I were to invest, I need to invest there. Now, as a local, if I were a Lebanese living in Beirut or in other, in other cities in, in Lebanon, what are my conditions? Is, do you think this is something that will trickle down to them? I'm not talking about investment. I mean, you have, uh, you know, like em any emerging country, you have infrastructure issues. You have, I don't know, we're from the broadband to the ease of just setting up a business. Is it something that is changing as well? I think what will change is not, none of these things will change. What will change is the, the resources available to make overcoming these challenges. So instead of fixing the infrastructure, we will simply have better infrastructure to deal with fixing it yourself. Uh, fixing large problems in emerging markets is like waiting for Godot. It doesn't happen. <laughs> so what you do is you create the right environment so that you don't have to deal with these problems. And already we've showcased that this is possible in sequence in 2010. And, uh, and as a result, a lot of people have copied that, uh, our, our, our approach. Se sequence was an accelerator, right? Yes, yes. Uh, a lot of people have copied our approach. There's a digital cluster today, which we are currently housed in, that actually copied the exact same approach we had to overcoming the infrastructure problem by load balancing multiple internet connection onto one connection to make to give us access to something more robust and faster, which is something that we had implemented in 2011. So there are solutions to every problem. It just takes 
uh, creating these solutions in the right environment so that the startup doesn't have to focus on finding a solution to all of these problems. They just walk into an environment that's the equivalent of being in San Francisco. Yes, but then that uh, doesn't preclude a startup if it grows a certain size. Then, uh, and I'm not talking here about infrastructure. I'm talking about, you know, I want to get access to foreign investors. I want to get access to foreign advisors. At some point, and, and we see that in a lot of emerging uh, markets. I mean, uh, uh, Ivan is in Poland and sees that as well. There's suddenly a transfer where startups leave. Is that something you're afraid of or something you're okay with? I'm not afraid of it. I'm expecting them to leave. Uh, I, to be honest, uh, and I know this is uh, this is recorded, but I want them to leave because they need to take with them the message that Lebanon is a place to start a company. We're not yet a place to grow a company, but we are a place to start a company. And a year ago, we weren't a place to start a company. So one step at a time. If we can establish ourselves as a launch pad, then I think that's a good enough starting point for the next three to five years. Once we've got enough traction, then we can start uh, claiming that we are a good place to throw it, to grow a company. Ivan, you want to take uh, the last question? No, that, that's a really, rather really inter interesting, interesting approach and interesting strategy. Uh, thinking about the next steps, what what are your next steps? You mentioned something that you're going to be doing an event in in Singapore. So we're doing an um, event in Singapore uh, on uh, September 17, 18, 19, 2021 20, with our partners, Golden Gate Ventures. It's a it's a very high uh, level event. Only 25 people are coming from Lebanon. The total attendee of the event is going to be between 75 and 100 in total. Very small, high caliber, focused on bringing together uh, growth stage startups, uh, uh, VCs, uh, support institutions to make sure that the link between Southeast Asia and the and Lebanon is a robust link. So should they want to do business development, acquisition, investment, and whatnot along the lines of a retreat, I don't know if you're not familiar with that, but retreats are basically where you take very high caliber business professionals, put them together, and by the end of the retreat, they all feel like they're best friends. And if we can make that happen, it's it's worth a lot of money and it's worth a lot of uh, development down the line. I, I'm, so so, I'm, so, I'm so sorry I'm missing it, man, by the way. <laughs> Dude, you don't even want to know. You don't even want to know what's happening because no, you're no, gonna, no, you're gonna no, that's yourself. off the record. Yeah. No, so yeah, I was supposed to be there, and I'm actually on holiday. So for some reason, you know, I'm, guys, I'm turning 40, so that's my 40th holidays. You look 25 to me, Paul. <laughs> Do you have any closing words before uh, I finish? The, we finish the show. Yeah. Well, we we're doing Singapore. We're doing Tehran around uh, the 10th of November, and then we're doing Accelerate in Beirut around the, uh, 10, 11 December and all of them give anybody who's interested in any one of them a good perspective on Lebanon. So should you find any interest in Lebanon on this investment or startup or just you know want to know more about the country, join us at any one of these events and we'd love to have you. Perfect on that. Thank you very much, Samir. Thank Check you guys. Bye-bye. Ciao, guys.